to 1 p.m. every day. Join the study to find out in 60 Days of Glory 2020. Don't miss it. Fantastic. It's 19 to 5 small minutes since it clocked 7 on a Tuesday night in Uyo, the capital of a state called Akwaibom in a country called Nigeria. Of course, it's on the continent of Africa and everyone is agog, everywhere is agog because 60 Days of Glory is the program. It's the day 55, five more days to round off this first stanza, this first season, and then we get into serious business. My name is Michael Bush, my production team, headed by producer IJ Quera, they are ever present, and we look forward to seeing them, all of them, we'll see them on Saturday. I'll bring them on set. At a quarter to the end of the program, we'll bring them on set, because Sunday will just be something else. But yeah. the man who matters most is here, Global Barber, Dr. Abel Damina. The intercontinental, intercontinental. Mr. Bush. <laughs> Baba, so nice so to good see to see you this evening. Fantastic. We were together not, yeah, sure, not too long ago. Radio, it was a blast. Fantastic. It was very nice. Fantastic. Very, very nice. Fantastic, Baba. Thank you for making it happen. Yes, Baba. You know, we spent the night, we spent last night in um, a Sienu Gym. So yes. we're going to start tonight there from. Okay, so a Sienu Gym. First shot. Augustine. Hello, Baba. Dr. Abel Damina, thank you for your expository teachings. May God give you more grace to teach us more about Jesus Christ. Baba, I'm very ill and want to go for treatment this month. Please pray for me for divine healing. In the name of Jesus, we pray for your sick body to be healed right now. Receive the healing power of God in your body, from your head to the soles of your foot. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Still from Estienudim, Isaac Boniface says, Hello, Baba. Dr. Abel Damina, my father in Christ and the preacher of the true gospel of Christ Jesus. God bless you. And Mr. Michael Bush. Well, if you're having some um, noise at the background, you know, we're in a, a live studio and, uh, you know, it's a church and some sorts of things can happen, but don't, not to worry and save hands. So, uh, it says, um, please, sir, pray for me. I've been in torments and I've had serious attacks since December. Something keeps running from my head to my toe. Been to hospital, the doctors found nothing. I started listening to your preaching. I have faith in Christ Jesus that is finished work on the cross and uh, redemption will save me and heal me. In the name of Jesus, we command whatever is moving in your system to cease right now. Amen. And we speak peace over your body. Amen. From your head to the soles of your foot, be healed. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Okay, Baba, from, uh, you know, I'm just trying to use my knowledge of Akwaibum State, my knowledge of the geography of Akwaibum State to navigate today. So, still by road from uh, Esienudim, we're getting next into Ikorepene. They're very close, really. And from Ikorepene, rise Bishop Udeme says, uh, happy birthday to my pastor, Dr. Ebel Damina. I pray the good Lord keeps you alive to see more and more years in Jesus' name. Amen. I love you, sir. Once again, happy birthday, Daddy. I wish to be like you when I grow up. Uh, Fantastic. That's a good thing. Thank you. That's a great ambition. Yeah. Okay. From Ikorepene, let's go to Abak. I'm trying to see where I have my Abak number one. Okay, here it is. And um, writing there is 80. 80 says, please, Dr. Damina, you've been saying bless you, bless you. Is it right for a person to say bless you? Is she or he the one blessing or God? I'm used to God bless you. Thank you. Well, I think you are having issues with semantics there. Bless you simply means we are calling blessings into your life. All right. <laughs> okay. So... To steal from my back and then, Baba, I'm an, ardent listening, uh, I'm an ardent listener to your teachings on the revelation of Jesus, both on radio and TV. What I hear you teach makes me to call you the Apostle Paul of our time. God bless you, Baba. Now my question, a believer of Jesus who is very committed to prayer, speaking in tongues, church activities, and generosity, yet lives in the flesh of committing fornication and adultery, drinking and smoking often. One, can such affect his relationship with the Holy Spirit in terms of divine visions? The reason why you live right is not because you want to see visions. Seeing visions is a right in Christ Jesus. 
However, the believer that is born of God does not live in the flesh. He doesn't live in the flesh. He's born of the spirit. He's in the spirit, but he can have identity crisis. So such a person that is wallowing in the mire of sin, you want to also ask, is he truly saved? Is he really born again? Or is he a false convert? Or is he just, you know, a pretender? Because once you're born of God, your nature is a brand new nature. And that nature is not comfortable with sin. And even if you're having identity crisis, you can't be comfortable in it because that's not your natural environment. So you, you want to find out the person that is into all those things, is he truly born again? That's very important. And if he is, is he getting the right word that will give him the right revelation of his identity? That's also very important. Still from Tony Atom in Abaka Kwaibum said, can such affect the manifestation of his or ministry gift in Christ Jesus? It will not affect the manifestation of his gift because the church in Corinthian were full of all kinds of vices, yet they were operating the gifts of the Spirit. However, it can stop the people that he's supposed to be a blessing to from receiving from him because of his bad example and testimony. From a back to a back, in a back, hello, Mr. Michael Bush and Dr. Abel Damina. Please, Baba, you said that what happens in the New Testament was already written in the Old Testament. My question is, I want you to enlighten me about the book in the Old Testament that says when Jesus would be born, he would be chased by Herod, the king of Bethlehem. Thank you. Well, if you want to find out all of that, you need to you know, get the teachings we have taught already. Get our previous teachings and listen to them patiently. You will come to that full understanding. So my advice, get the promises of God. The promises of God is a whole series I taught. I think about 14, part 1 to 14 hours of teaching. Sit down with it patiently and calmly follow. You will have that understanding. Goodbye, Abak. It make me be nice. Israel, writing from Etmeko, Baba, I appreciate your labor in bringing light to us. My question, the Bible says I have set watchmen on your wall. What's the meaning, please? Also, is it wrong to preach from the Old Testament even when there are moral lessons? Finally, what's the difference between, between intercession and supplication? Which one is better to be practiced by a believer? Thank you. Well, again, you, you must be able to know that when you read such scriptures, they are prophecies of the Old Testament. So, therefore, they must be interpreted in the light of Christ. Now, what's the difference between an intercessor and supplication? Jesus is the intercessor. We don't intercede. Even though some churches will tell you intercessory group, you know, intercessory team, no human being is an intercessor. Jesus is the intercessor. He's the mediator between God and man. But we supplicate. Supplicate means we pray and we receive. And we receive by faith for ourselves we receive by faith for other people. So what we really do is supplicate. But Jesus is the intercessor. Hebrews 7.25 says he ever liveth to make intercession for the saints. So that's the difference. Okay, let's make progress now. Still from it, Maple Peter. Hello, beloved Papa and Dr. Bush. Please, Baba, pray for me. I've been operator of Hainia twice. And it's still disturbing me. Secondly, can we pray in tongues and run our mind on scriptures since our understanding is unfruitful? Oh, yes, you can pray in tongues and just as you pray in the spirit, if you listen, you will have understanding. Because the Bible says, let him that pray in tongues also pray that he may be able to interpret his tongues. So you can pray in tongues and interpret your tongues. You can. It may post Israel says, thank you, Apostle Bush and Baba Dr. Damina for your exploits in God's vineyard. Please kindly clarify this scripture in consonance with God, not concerned with killing. Numbers 16, 32 to 35. Also, the, uh, the altar that Abraham raised brought succor to Jacob in his time of adversity. What's the position as well as the implication of this in our faith in Christ today? There are only two things you look out for in the Old Testament. Not the stories, not the wars, not the killings. You look for Christ. The Bible is a book of Christ. However, you will find Christ in the midst of all kinds of events. So when you find the events, look for Christ. When you find Christ, take Christ, leave the event. John 5, 39, search the scriptures. For in them you think you have eternal life. They are they which testify of me. My advice to you, if you are really serious about locating God's character in the Old Testament, get my teaching series on the misunderstood God. Part 1, part 2, part 3, 
part four. Maybe getting on to about 50, 60 hours to clarify the character of God within the circumstances of the Old Testament. Okay, from Mitmeko to Ika local government area, still in that part of Akwaibum State, by the way, it's 7.30 to the minute, in Uyo, Nigeria, where we're broadcasting from the global headquarters of Power City International. So, to Ika, Mark, no, God's portion, Mark, Akmanua, writing from Ika, Akwaibum State, says, we thank God for using you to correct so much of the ills in Christ's family within the 60 days of glory window. Glory, in the past 55 days so far, you've not touched the aspects of misconception in church burial. Please help us correct this misconception of taking capses to church or not during burial as practiced by some churches. Thank you. Well, first of all, in burying the dead, there's not supposed to be so much ado, which I see done all over Africa, in burying a dead person. You know, it's not supposed to be, we're not supposed to worship dead people. Because the man that you're carrying his corpse around is no more there. It's just the remains that are there. So we shouldn't make a big deal out of it. You know, just simply get a nice place, dig the place, bury the person. And in burying the person, the people you pray for are the family, the people he has left there. You don't pray for a dead body. The guy is gone. You know, all of those are things that need to be corrected. And, you know, like I always say, why build a house for a man that has died? When, while he was alive, you never gave him that kind of money to enjoy. Which, if you had given him when he was alive, you would have lived longer. So these are things we need to correct. You know, scripturally, there's no big deal about burying dead people at all. Jesus said, let the dead bury their dead. Meaning, if somebody dies in your house, don't make a big deal out of it. Just dig the ground, put him there, case closed. But people have made a big religion out of burying dead people, and it is not correct at all. Okay, last shot from a car incidentally comes from the same God's portion, Mark Akpanua. It says, having been made clear that angels were made to save man, please, I want to know, angels are still in operation for man, since faith in Jesus, as if I read in all, of, uh, sort, all sorts of things, that is to say whether Jesus retired the services of the angels. No, angels are still, are still there to serve man. However, they serve man as they are hearkening to the voice of God's word. So, instead of talking to angels, talk to Christ, speak the word of God, Christ will get the angels to do what they need to do on your behalf since you are in him. Okay, let's move outside um, that senatorial district. By the way, Akwaibom, for those who don't know, is divided into three senatorial districts. There is Akwaibom Northeast, where we were, or what people call it, correct me, the senatorial district. There is Akwaibom, um, excuse me, that was Northwest. Northwest is correct me, the senatorial district. Northeast is your senatorial district. And of course, Akwaibom South is uh, Ekes senatorial district. So from Akwaibom Northwest, we're getting into the Northeast, and the first part of call is E2. And Ekanem Ekanem writing says, Please, Daddy, can the Holy Spirit be impacted through phone? I need the baptism of Holy Spirit with evidence of, talk, uh, of tongue speaking. No, it's not imparted through phone. <laughs> it's not at all, but we can teach you and bring you understanding. And once you come to understanding, you speak in tongues. Okay, so that is from E2. I thought he asked another question, still the same economy. Economy says, please, Baba, pray for God to help me to be free from indebtedness, uh, affliction, satanic cage, and limitations. We'll pray for you, but I think beyond prayer, you need counsel, you need advice, you need wisdom on what to do, because freedom from financial bondage is not a function of prayer. It's a function of common sense. It's a function of wisdom. It's a function of you know, knowing exactly what to do with money management. However, we pray for a miracle for you to come out of indebtedness. We break the yoke of indebtedness and we declare a miracle gets you out of it. Receive that miracle in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Okay, to Uyo, the capital of the state now, Martin writing says, Hello, Baba and Mr. Bush. Please, Baba, you said God does not get angry. Please put me through on First Chronicles 27, 24, Psalms 28, 31, Romans 12, 19, Ephesians 5, 6, Colossians 3, 6, 1 Thessalonians 2, 16. What about this kind of question? This guy is just setting a trap and landmines all over the place. Send him to go and follow the landmines. Yes, so you should go and get the teachings. You <laughs> <laughs> should go and get my teaching on the misunderstood God. Part 1, part 2, part 3, part 4. About 60 hours of teaching. It will clear you completely of all those misconceptions in the Old Testament. 
Okay, still from Uyo, Mr. Aaron. Hello, Dr. Abel Damina. I'm a trader. I believe that God has blessed me in all things except one thing, money. I love my neighbors like myself. I love God with all my heart, Baba. I want you to pray for me for open doors of wealth. Thank you. I'm going to pray for you, but again, money does not answer to prayer. Money answers to work. Money answers to service. Money answers to you know, um, adding value to people and they give you money in exchange for the value you're adding. So instead of thinking of prayer more, think about skills, think about mentorship, think about, you know, apprenticeship, think about working under somebody who has success in the area of money. Let him teach you the secrets that I used to make money. It's more productive and faster for you than spending all the time praying. However, I pray that you have favor and that you're able to have relationships that will add value and bring you to a place of understanding so you can make wealth, establish God's purpose on the earth. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Okay, still from Uyo, this one comes from, um, yeah, yeah, Clement. Samuel Clement says, please, how can we be calling a man as intelligent as Dr. Damina Baba? Please, Mr. Bush, refresh that name. My question, okay, let me take you up on it. Um, this, this idea, I, I've not heard anyone uh, criticize yes, that now, yes. but I, I guess it's a long time he wrote this and he has changed his mind now. So yes. but I still would do him the honor of saying, look, when somebody has even raised the, the bar of um, Papa, you, you go to Baba. You can, somebody who has turned everything, you know, you just turn uh, Papa, Papa, you know, keep the P down. It uh, gives you Baba. So what is your own brother? Okay, we, we look at that. We look at that. But... <laughs> It's not a big deal. Okay, but his question is, um, is it right for us, uh, Baba, for us to say our pastor, God bless, to tell our pastor God bless you, or only the pastor should bless the members? Thank you. Samuel Clement. Well, again, it depends in what context you're asking for the blessing for. In what context? It depends on the context. Again, like I said, there's no omnibus use of any word of scripture. It must be used contextually. So, if it's in the context of a pastor going to go and preach, going for missionary work, yeah, you can ask him on your journey, God's speed, God's blessings. Sure, why not? Okay, um, two more, and we're done with the state. So this one sits from you, Joshua. Please, Baba, is it proper for a man or of God, for a man of God or a believer to use F words? F words is curse words, all right? On other people, I mean to abuse people with the same mouth that he or she uses to edify. Well, not just a man of God, every believer. The Bible says, no, let no evil communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which will edify people that it may minister grace to the hearer, so. Okay, so, okay, uh, all right. I, I'm sure he's just uh, indirectly taking a dick. He's trying to refer to you fool or that, which the Bible itself uses. Well, if it is fool, the word fool is the word anointos. It means you have no understanding, that's all. Mm -hmm. And if somebody doesn't have an un 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 understanding, he's a fool. And that's what he is. You know, that's what he it is. It's not <laughs> an abuse. It's just a description of his status. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so foolishness is not an abuse, it's a description. No. Yes. Okay. Yes. Baba. Ba. Yes. Okay, one last shot from Aquaibum State. This one is the longish one. I'll try to take that. Please, Baba. Ba. I need your advice. My name is Godwin Akman. I'm writing from Aquaibum State. I'm a member of a particular church and I belong to the protocol department in the state. Some time ago, we went for a burial along the line. I just stayed with a young girl of 18 to 20 years inside the vehicle we're using. I asked her if she's worshiping with us. She responded, yes, but she, that she's in training. From there, I gave her a, a piece of advice that she should be serious with the training. As the discussion continued, I asked her what she's into. She told me she just finished writing jam and that she's looking for admission in one of the polytechnics. I told her that my cousin is schooling there, and that um, since she's a member of our church, I would discuss with my cousin so that she could, um, he could render help to her for her name to come out. She started thanking me that I should try and help her out. We exchanged phone numbers. I told her to remind me, but to my greatest surprise, after some months, she called me and demanded money that she's no longer interested in the job I promised her. There was no discussion, uh, Baba, about job, it was just for her to get admission, but she said that I promised to get her a job. She also mentioned that I gave her a particular account number. She paid in 16,000 Naira. There was nothing like that, Baba. Um, so what I did, I reported to my group leaders. They supported her. I moved further to report to a higher group. They still supported her. Finally, I reported to the founder of the church. His own was worst. Upon all this, they refused to carry out any investigation. I even told the founder, please, let's confirm the account number to know the owner, even the phone number they used 
to send the account number to her, they refused. All of them believed the girl and turned against me. Even when my wife wanted to say something, they refused. But they found out later, gave the girl the 16,000 naira after accusing me. Please, Baba, pray for my vindication and also advise me. Well, next time, be careful. You know, you learn lessons from things that happen. Don't be bitter, don't be angry. Just be careful. It's like Joseph. When Joseph was accused falsely, he didn't get bitter and angry. Eventually, when he was vindicated, he said, what they planned for evil, God has turned it around for good. So, you know, don't be angry. Just see it as one of those things that we go through in life. And the Bible says you suffer for right, righteousness. You suffer for doing right. You are blessed for it. Okay, we take that that came from um, the southern senatorial district. That's Aquaibum South. So immediately we're going to go to next door river state through that route. Ben, our first caller tonight. Hello. Good evening. Yeah, thank you for calling us. Your name, where you calling from? One minute. This is Pastor Francis calling from Zambia. We our kids come from. Yes, go ahead. Good evening, brother. Yeah, thank you. Good evening, Papa. Evening. Bless you. Bless you, sir. We are very happy for the message, sir. Okay. We are very happy for the message. We are very to bless you, sir. Amen. 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 Okay. okay, let's make progress now to River State. Stephen, writing there from, says, Adam was literally on earth. What was the name of the place Adam first stayed if Eden is figurative? We're quiet where the Bible is quiet. We're loud where the Bible is loud. The Bible never told us, so we will not create it for you. Okay, still um, there from Victor Okure doesn't say where he's writing from, but as we leave uh, River State, we can take this for the road. Hello, Baba. I'm 13 years old. I have a question on Revelation 29 and Ezekiel 39 to 16. Is God a consuming fire? No, God consumes our sins on himself. So he's a consuming fire in the sense that he took our sins and consumed it on himself. That's what it means. Okay, because of time and the lack of it, because we need to go outside the country, let's um, just zoom out of the Portacourt International Airport and head to Lagos. Uh, Samuel Ellison is waiting for us. Greetings, Baba. Greetings, Mr. Bush. I want to know, though as a new creature, I still struggle with finances, and we are being taught that the Bible is just about Christ. I believe that... But does that mean, Baba, there is no verse in the Bible that could be a light in my current financial struggles? And also a prayer for my mother. She's been pregnant and she's overdue for delivery. Please, a word for her delivery. That would wait a while as we take this caller. Hello. Hello, sir. Good evening, sir. Thank you for joining us. Your name, where you calling from, ma'am? It's Salma from Abuja, sir. Go ahead. I want to speak to my daddy. Go ahead. Go ahead. In I mean, sir. Love you. Sanu, sir, happy Sanu. Yeah, I didn't come on the phone and congratulate you. But I sent you a message, but I sent you a message to congratulate you. No, I sent you a message to Amen. I didn't hear you. I didn't hear you. I didn't hear well, but mm. I had the senu. <laughs> okay. I had the, the greeting in house. Sir. Okay. Yeah. So, okay. So, we'll still go back to that um, text from Lagos about a prayer for her mother who's been um, long due. She's pregnant. Yes. Just before the prayer, he said he, what scripture will help him with making money. Mm. Bible says, uh, he that does not work should not eat. That's the scripture in the Bible. So, go get a job, go and look for what to do, make money and eat. For your mother, we pray for a miracle. We ask that, you know, a miracle happens with her delivery, and we speak to every part of our system in the name of Jesus. Amen. And we declare it done in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Another caller. Hello. Hello. Thank you for joining us. Your name, where are you calling from? Go ahead. Reverend Mr. Bush. Thank you for joining us. Reverend Papa. Good evening. Bless you. My name is Jeremiah James. I'm coming from Tribu. Okay. Please, my question is, 
I want to ask, you said in one of your teaching that the, the first time that the angel saw God was in a manger. Yes. So my question now is, who gave the message to the Lord that they, they minister to the children of Israel? Because the Bible let me to know that the angel minister the Old Testament to Moses. So that is my question. Thank you. Okay. That the angels gave the Old Testament. Now, the angels didn't give the Old Testament to Moses. So that scripture you're quoting is wrong. So maybe if you call again and give us a proper scripture, we can be able to explain. Because I can't bring truth out of falsehood. What you quoted does not exist in the Bible. Okay, so still from Lagos, before we fly outside Nigeria, greetings, Baba. Happy belated birthday, sir. May God continue to increase you on every side. Sir, your ministry has been a blessing to my family and me. I've been following and listening to your messages since 2013. I've been built up with the word of God and I'm enjoying the abundant riches and blessings in Christ Jesus. Sir, I need more scriptures in the new gospel concerning receiving visions and prophecies, uh, prophecies from some churches. I've been trying to make someone see the new reality on Christ on this issue. Thank you. Elizabeth Abayomi, Ayobami, is in Lagos. Wow, visions and dreams. I don't have scriptures for visions and dreams. They're just supernatural giftings that comes to believers. It's not the core of the Christian message. It's not the core of the gospel. The gospel of Christ is a message. A message of his death, burial, and resurrection. And that is not a vision. That is not a dream. It's a written message that we preach. Quick caller. Hello. Yes, good evening. Thank you for joining us. You know where you're calling from. Go ahead. From you. Yeah. Good evening, Papa. Amen. Bless you. What's your name? Thank you, sir. I'm from you. About you. Okay. Yes, sir. Please. I just want to um, um, ask chapter one. Okay. Yes. But my not passing. We can't hear okay, you. We, Maybe we, you should we, call again. We lost that. Just try and yeah. call us. Very quick trip to South Africa. Greetings, Mr. Bush and Baba. Jesus is God. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. That's the character of the Father revealed. And that's also the reason my salvation is eternal. My question to Baba is, what is the re relationship of Second Corinthians um, 1.20 uh, with Hebrews 13.8? And Hebrews 6, 17 to 20. As I was doing my research and study, I could not also understand which promise was Brother Paul talking about. And the first scripture I quoted, because at that time, Jesus was glorified as that was the promise from the beginning. Lerato, oh, my friend Lerato Mofoken is in Blue Fountain, South Africa. Now, those scriptures you quoted, again, I, they're all talking about the same thing. The promise is that Jesus was going to rise from the dead. And after his resurrection, there is no more promise that is unfulfilled. There's none. All has been fulfilled in the resurrection of Christ. From South Africa to Lesotho, Baba, uh, this one says, you mentioned in your earlier teachings that New Testament doesn't start from the four gospel books. But the writer of the Bible mentioned them as New Testament books. Why does he consider them as New Testament books? Clara is in Lesotho. I don't know who you claim to be the writer of the Bible. So if you're able to show me who the writer of the Bible is, I may be able to help you. But I think what you're trying to say is that the way the Bible you bought is organized. Is that New Testament started from Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. That's what you're trying to say. However, it will help you to get the details teaching that will help you see where there is New Testament, where there is Old Testament, where the Gospels are, and what the Bible explains them to be. The Bible is a self-explanatory book. It has its explanation within the book. So when we teach, we allow the Bible to explain itself. Translators organize the Bible the way they did. Let me shock you one more, Clara. The Bible, does the original does not have chapters. It does not have verses. It does not have punctuations. All those were added by people who did translation. So the same way they added things to the Bible, they could have also decided where which book should be and which book should end. Even the chapters and verses are not in the original. It is translators that did all of that. That's why sometimes you have to remove them to understand the message of the context. So that's what it, that's the way it is. So 
that's why you have to study. You have to calm down and really study so you can understand technically how the Bible was supposed to, to be organized so that when you read it, you can have proper understanding. We have uh, just a little over 10 minutes, if our producer will let us tonight, to round off. And um, I can tell we still have two more continents to touch, but this caller, hello. Hello, I am Mohammed Jeremiah Husseini. Okay. I'm Mohammed Jeremiah okay. Husseini. I'm calling from Israel State. Okay. So I want a more light on this um, passage, First John, from 8 to 10. He said, if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. So he said, is it, as a Christian, Christ, Christ has taken our sins away. So which, which of, is he talking to us as Christians or to unbelievers? He's talking to unbelievers. If you observe verse 7, he talked to Christians. Then verse 8, 9, and 10, he talked to unbelievers. Then chapter 2, verse 1, he talks to Christians. So he was talking to two classes of people. Let's make progress, but I can squeeze in another call or two if, um, you know, if the mood is right, you know. Okay, <laughs> so to Zambia next. Hello, Intercontinental Mr. Bush and Baba. This is States Munchini in Kabwe, Zambia. Thank you, Baba, for the word of blessing you spoke last night on my birthday. Um, okay, this was written the day before yours. Yes. Because it says tomorrow is your birthday. I really appreciate and celebrate you. Please join me in pray for the fruit of the womb for my elder sister. Thank you. Yes, All sir. right. We, we stand in faith for your elder sister. We ask that she receives the power to take in and bring forth a miracle for that marriage. In Jesus' name. Amen. From Zambia to Egypt, and that will be our last for Africa before we... Zoom outside the continent. Hello, Baba and Intercontinental, Mr. Michael Bush. Baba, I sincerely celebrate you for the great work you do and for doing the exact mind of Christ, for opening the eyes of the blind to see the light in Christ Jesus. Great grace abound towards you. Sir, is there a way you could, uh, one could reach you for counseling and other things that are personal that, would, that such a one would not like to share on air? That is for those outside the country. I believe so many are battling with the same issue. Thanks and God bless you. Looking forward to your response. Peter Simeon in Cairo, Egypt. Yes, Peter Simeon. Just send a mail to Dr. Abel Damina at yahoo.com and indicate you are seeking for counseling. Put all your details, your phone numbers and all that. And then our office will arrange to make sure I'm able to speak to you. Okay, from Egypt to the United Kingdom, that's to Europe, and um, Francis Johnson writing from Newcastle says, Glory, dear Ambassador Bush. Oh, my. That's right. And he adds, Global Best Anchor of the Year. My. That's right. <laughs> okay, greetings to you, Baba. First of all, I want to thank the Almighty God for your life, for using you to bless us through your preaching and teaching of the Word of God. You've made some clarifications over so many clouded verses in the Bible. You are a blessing to this generation, and my family and I are very grateful to be part of this revolution. We celebrate you, Baba. May God continue to increase your anointing. You recall a few weeks ago I requested for healing, uh, you know, uh, healing prayer over my chest and stomach pain through this program of 30, now 60 days of glory. With humility and great respect, I'm happy to tell you that both pains are gone. I want to thank God for my healing and you too for your prayer. God bless you. Praise Francis God. in Newcastle, United Kingdom. Praise Great God. Great testimony. Praise Just God. in time Praise for God. this uh, next caller. Hello. Hello. Thank you for joining us. Your name, where are you calling from? My name is Paul. Okay. I'm calling from uh, our city, Makode Campus, Tennessee. Okay. I just want to appreciate Papa for the work you're doing and to also appreciate him for anchoring this program for almost 60 days now. We that have Papa's children, we want to say we really, really want to appreciate him and to appreciate him and all the things. Thank you so much. Fantastic. 
Fantastic. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor Paul. Okay. So another shot coming from the UK still. And this is uh, Happy Birthday, Baba, my mentor, my teacher, my coach. From the deepest, um, in the most parts of my heart, I'm so grateful to you for the labor in word and doctrine. You are a true gift to the body of Christ. You make, you make us confident in who we are in Christ. We cannot be tossed to and fro by every wind of doctrine. We stand steadfast, Baba. We appreciate you and continue to thank God for your life. Happy, gigantic, oh, gigantic, um, glorious birthday, sir. Wow, they're still doing that. And please, sir, during the first service, you mentioned that John 7, 38, reading from 37, in the last day, that great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried, saying, if any man... And he continued, you said, out of his belly is not the believer's belly, but Jesus' belly. Yes. Please, sir, can you clarify? As I've always read it to mean out of the believer's belly, that is out of my belly. Once again, thank you so much, Baba. I love you so dearly. Your daughter, Sister Emelda, Power City, Enfield, London. Sister Emelda, she's the one who says she's going to host you. Ah. Yes, Sister Emelda. It's out of Jesus' belly, not the believer's belly, because Jesus is the one baptizing you. You're not the one baptizing yourself. So out of his belly, which is figurative, shall flow rivers of living water to the believer. So the believer receives from Jesus the baptizer. This last caller tonight, hello. Hello, good evening. Thank you for joining us. You know where you're calling from? Good evening, Dr. My name is Jude. I'm caught. We didn't quite hear that. Yes, my name is Jude. I'm calling from you're calling from? Holland. 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 Okay, go ahead, please. Uh, Mr. Bush, I thank you. I've been following the and you all this program. I'm so grateful knowing you, Dr. Edel Dam. Um, happy birthday, Dr. Edel Dam. I sent some messages to you. But Thank you. Cool. Thank you. I'm doctor. I'm calling to you. And after the 50 days, I'm saying. Yeah, talk is so well, we, we, we apologize. We apologize. Um, we apologize. But we can assure you there are still five more days to go. And so try to call us. We like those calls coming from outside the country. Okay, so we're about to leave it for tonight, but we just must make a quick trip to India. That is to Asia, and that's where we're going to spend the night probably. And this one says, hello from India, the Apostle Paul of our time, the Papalicious Baba. That should be the Papalicious Baba. <laughs> the global mind of the moment and the intercontinental awaiting Apostle Mr. Bush. That's right. <laughs> Happy belated birthday, Baba. As you celebrate your new age, may God give you more utterance as his word finds endless expressions through you that the world at large will come to the revelation knowledge of God. And may God deliver you from the wicked and unreasonable men in Jesus' name. Amen. Please, Baba, help me explain this. How or at what point did Christ become the seed of Abraham and the prayer of Elijah that it will not rain for three years? So was it if, uh, something figurative? Lastly, Baba, kindly explain the... Prayer suffer not a witch to live, thanks to emancipation, the Apostle Paul of our time. Thank you. Well, Jesus became the seed of Abraham from the beginning in prophecy. All right, that was in prophecy. Now, um, suffer not the witch to live was not spoken by God. It was spoken by men within that time. God does not want anybody to die. It's not his will for anybody to perish. So, you know, that's the explanation to those scriptures. But if you get my teaching on the beast, understood God, part one, two, three, and four, all those scriptures are properly explained with exegesis. Okay, Baba, we need to go tonight. We need to go at this uh, point. I'd love to thank everyone who was part of this edition of the show, producer uh, IG Query Pastor. Many thanks for your great work with the production team backstage. My name is Michael Bush. Baba Global is here now. Dr. Ebel Damina to say benediction. The Intercontinental Mr. Bush, it was another blast tonight. Absolutely. Thank you, man. I want to quickly mention that next Sunday morning, for everybody in Akwai Bomb State and around Nigeria, we're having a live service here at Power City. All our campus, I mean, all our church houses 
everybody that is a part of Power City. If you have enjoyed the teachings on radio and all of these broadcasts, we want to invite everybody to church on Sunday. We have two services, 7.30 a.m. and 10 a.m. on Sunday. There's a book I have written that I'm trusting God will be ready by that Sunday. We're going to give it out free to everybody in Bomb State that comes to the service. Free books given out to everybody. Online, we're going to upload them on a portal and you can download for free also from anywhere around the world. So Sunday morning again, 7.30 a.m. It will be live here at Power City International, 98 Waniba Road and 10 a.m. We'll be live with Mr. Michael Bush you know, question and answer. And that will be the last session before we take a break and then we continue through the month of September, October, November, December. Now, if you're a pastor, church leader, or you're a minister of the gospel who has questions on the message of the New Testament, I want to encourage you to join us on Thursday for Bible study, pastor's Bible study, on Thursday at 11 a.m. right here at Power City. The number to call to reserve a seat is 080-6066-6800. Once again, 080-6066-6800. You don't want to miss the Bible study if you're a pastor. We love you, everybody. Make sure you join all the broadcasts tonight, tomorrow afternoon, and tomorrow evening. We look forward to having more times with you. And until then, enjoy the grace of Christ. Good night from your Nigeria. Church in the air and church online. Join Drs. Abel and Rachel Daminer as he brings you sound Bible study through the month of July to September at 60 Days of Glory 2020, exegetically examining the fundamentals of the Christian faith, salvation in Christ. Date from 5th of July to 6th of September 2020. Time 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. from Mondays to Saturdays, 8 a.m. and 11 a.m. on Sundays. Book up live on our Facebook and YouTube page and also live on Kingdom Life Network TV, on My TV, or Strong Decoder, and live on Comfort FM 95.1 Oyo by 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. Mondays to Saturdays and 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. every Sunday, and live on Inspiration FM 105.9. 8 p.m. to 9 p.m. daily. Also listen to a rebroadcast of the services daily on XLFM 106.9 Oyo from 1 p.m. to 3 p.m. daily and on Radio Aquaibo 90.5 FM Oyo 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. every day. Join the study to find out in 60 Days of Glory 2020. Don't miss it.